Hello there everyone and welcome! I am Bogmo. Today we are going to be looking at Terminal Conflict. Now, this is a game in the beta. It was offered to me by the people at Strategy Mill and by Nikolai. Um, the developers, press, you know, etc, etc. The game makers and their associates. And it is a Cold War simulator. Where you uh, simulate the Cold War. Uh, so the idea, apparently, is that there's going to be an eight-week kind of rollout of the beta, and uh, as the game continu as the rollout continues, more and more features will be made available. So let's start with what we have available. First of all, let's uh, there we are. Put in a password and a username. Check profile, which, as you can see, it's not going to matter much because it's all just on your own personal one. Let's put in that button there. Welcome back. Hello, Mervyn. Voice around BIOS robot. Uh, so this is our friendly robot. He's going to give us some chatting. Um, we'll explore his backstory perhaps another time. For now, we'll let's go to the War Games mode. So this is kind of the tutorial. And you got the first four. And as you progress through it, uh, you have to control more and more things to run the game. So let's, uh... And eventually, we'll be able to play whichever side we want. And then I will play the Russians. And then I can say, Comrade, in my terrible Soviet accent. And then I'll be happy. And... Maybe cause a nuclear holocaust. That might make me less happy. But we'll have to see how it goes. Attack plus attack equals victory. The simple and lovely pleasures of command. Arms race. Now, I do like... I want to show you something. See here. Two U.S. Army commands. Standing together as friends. And it's friends like these that win battles. Aww. Adorable. They've actually called their army commands BFFs. So yeah, like you, as you can see, it's kind of got this definite kind of um, early computer aesthetic with the scrolling text and all that sort of stuff, and the, the kind of the screen look it's got going on. I do, I do quite appreciate the look. All right. True companions, side by side in the crossing point between us and the USSR. A circle of friendship covers all the flanks. Yay, friendship. And that was the USSR's militaristic move. Its unit type yet unknown, represented by the diamond. Lonely like a dinner for one, the ones who never get to win. As the only detected enemy land-based unit in Western Europe, I suspect it's an army command. Not to worry, we have the two combat-ready army commands of our own. Okay. Select first BFF army command in Italy. So I guess this is who could... Western Europe is mostly controlled by us. Without having an... Yeah, so we've got the two sides. We're in Western Europe. These are stats that don't matter to us quite yet. Alright, well, let's... Select our BFF one. Now move it into enemy territory. Ah uh, yes, we must be careful when declaring a war zone. Try not to do this too often. We wouldn't want to destroy the world. I would definitely not want to destroy the world. Let's proceed, but beware. In a war zone, any military unit can be destroyed. Well, that sounds unpleasant. Great. After reaching a stalemate. Both our and their army commands are reorganizing. For a time, they'll be unavailable. This means we need another unit to join in and give us the advantage. Okay. We have a friend on standby. You know the procedure. All right. Western German Center Corps. Send my them in there. Our second army command engages. The stalemate is broken, and the enemy army command destroyed. Yay! You see? Best friends are essential in winning battles, just like us, buddy. I like this AI. 
I knew you could do it because I believed in you like a true friend. Ah, you're my friend too, buddy. That's, I'm gonna play with the options. Um, hmm. I would like a strict voice option. Sadly. Hmm. Oh well. Let's go back to our war games mode. Let's check out the sea combat. Today's shipping forecast. Westerly breed with soon to be defeated enemies. Strengths and weaknesses of different type uh, fleet types. Alright. Makes sense. Arms race. Avast. They press their advantage. The Soviet surface fleet declares Italy a war zone. Oh no! Destroys our submarine fleet. A sneaky open handed slap. Be mindful of our surroundings. That's quite the slap. That is quite the slap. Uh, you know what? Let's say let's let's try a what. Avast. They press their advantage. The Soviet surface fleet declares ah. Italy a war zone. Just repeating. Destroys our submarine fleet. Okay. A sneaky open handed slap. Be mindful of our surroundings. So it looks like we have different kinds of fleets, and it's possibly doomsday. Come on. Learning we're vulnerable is more important than thinking we're invincible. Our fragility was staring us in the face. Acknowledge it. Okay. Be careful, friend. Winners don't go into fights swinging madly with their eyes closed and their backs exposed. Like our naive enemy, blinded by their shallow ignorance, opening themselves up to a counter blow. The surface fleet's main shortcoming are attacks from carrier fleets, and we have one combat ready. You know what to do. Ooh, so I think this is going to be a rock, paper, scissors type thing. Service fleet beats subs. Carriers beat surface fleets. Subs beat carriers. That makes sense. I can work with that. So, that looks... Yeah, that looks like a carrier. Yes, you see? Everything has a flaw. Now their surface fleet is destroyed. Yay! Oh no, our poor destroyed carrier fleet. No match for their submarine fleet. Circle. Irony? I'm not sure that's irony, but if I uh. We had a perfect weapon to destroy their ah, that's just as I thought. Handy. <laughs> Very handy. Come on, service fleet. We saved the day. We found their weakness and exploited it with strength. I like the little uh you little graphics there. Now celebrate by winning again. Greensbong, the USA has a commanding lead in the arena of nations. Superiority. For now, I would like to uh, move into being changing that to maybe the Soviets. Because it's always more fun to f play the villains. Arms race. Alright. Ouch. This is what I call a rough start. Do tell. Alright. So, I'm not sure why it's a rough start. I got my fleets. I've got some air forces. Probably fighters and bombers. A couple land armored units. And a fleet. Think ahead, of course. A plan of action for that unwanted turn of events. Eyes on the prize. Enter the world of intelligence. Send a recon mission to Greece. Reveal their units and uncover their plans. Command reserves. Okay. Ah! Well, that's, I guess, where the CIA will come in handy. Ooh, what do we have? Let's see. Information. I guess. Recon. Espionage. Infiltration. False flag operations. And assassinations. Interesting. Let's try a little bit of recon. Apparently that will cost me some of my... Squiggly S's. I like my squiggly S's. Gives force oriented information, revealing regional fog of war for one turn. Field. A lot of enemy army commands. Bombing run. We just have to get rid of that pesky fighter command. Don't panic. We'll 
use our brains. One step ahead, not four steps off a cliff. Okay. Is Second there army commander crossed the sea into a surprise attacking position. The surface fleet awaits its cargo. Is there a way to tell what's in this fleet, this force? Hmm, doesn't look like it. Alright, let's follow along. Uh, load them on my boats. Send my boats. Oh, interesting. I like the uh, little visual way to show what regions can you be sent to. And of course, it's neighboring regions. They're trying to break through. How ignorant. Gain air superiority. We have a combat ready fighter command. I'll let you do the honors. Okay, that's the fighter command. Fighter command, third air force. Looks like they have a farther range, not surprising. Top gun. Both fighters are now reorganizing, and the enemy air presence is swatted. So I guess the oh. we need to disrupt the enemy advance. The bomber command possesses that capability. Oh no. Let's attack Greece. They blow my tanks. Alright, we're going to Greece. The bomber command forces all enemy army commands in Greece into reorganizing. Ah, okay. Futile reply. If only they knew. I so. can't wait to see their faces when we initiate our surprise attack. When an enemy is in reorganization, uh, I guess that's what triggers them to be destroyed. So because I have my fleet with my boats or my, my armored command traverse the worst and end up first all right a flawless victory but don't get ahead of yourself oh never mind get ahead of yourself excellent excellent i'm enjoying this it all makes sense right use your fighters to to get air superiority use your bombers to put them on the defensive Use your land forces to attack their their guys while they're reorganizing and wipe them out. Or you can superior numbers with with sea combat playing a game of rock paper scissors. Leader combat. Mix the ingredients for a traffic cocktail. Stir things up enough, and you will witness a leader enter the fray. Cheers. What memories this brings back. All right. Um, for the greater good, some evil might be required. And it's going to take more than good deeds to curtail Soviet expansion. One immoral act on a moral path. In fact, it was such an act that kept me alive, letting me talk to you today. Professor Garrison was the one who made that sacrifice. Ooh. And uh, I've, I've read a little bit into this about Professor Garrison. But I'm going to keep this to myself. Give you a, a reason to want to investigate and find out what's going on. So, let's enter the dark side. Who's to say our enemy wouldn't do the exact same thing if they were in our position? On the brink of the greater good. Just like when the professor was cornered in that hallway, holding my stolen deck tapes. There was a moment of silence as the CIA guard with huge hairy arms stared at him. Professor Garrison used his cherished tennis ball as a missile attack. Similarly, use the carrier fleet's carrier operations ability on their reorganizing fighter command. Okay, so, naval power. Can be used to disrupt air power. The enemy fighter command is destroyed. Like the professor, we poked the bear. Come and get it, he shouted at the hairy beast. There's a lot of backstory going on here. On the tennis ball, out, just like their bomber command got knocked out by our carrier fleet's interception. Attack with our army command in Greece to further immobilize them. Just like the professor immobilized the giant with the Hulk's own handcuffs. So yeah, again, reinforcing that 
if your forces are reorganizing, they're vulnerable. And that groups like bombers need to be able to act safely. So let's take our army. Uh, and just move them in here. Great outcome. Their fighter command is destroyed. Their bomber command, lacking defensive ability, is destroyed as well. Yay! What's going on out there? A chilling voice emerged from the end of the corridor, snatching that moment of ease. Their leader appropriates our army command and fortifies Yugoslavia. Alright, so... Josip Broz Tito has risen to power in Western Europe. He contests one of our tanks, one of our armored units. So I guess he, he gets his own little stuff. Yugoslav communist leader and genius partisan. His independence promises an interesting future for Yugoslavia. His willingness to defy the party lie leaves as many in awe as there are those wondering just whose side is he on. Steadfast friend. Over time, and by using their abilities, the leader's power weakens. And that can be hastened by attacks. All right. Hmm. Excellent. So apparently we will uh, we will drop bombs on him to get rid of this leader. I like that little bomb dropping animation. In the end, I was never permanently deleted, thanks to this one devious act and the quick feet of a tennis-loving rancher. All right. It's fallen from power in Western Europe. It takes to do good. It can save the lives of us all. Yay! You win. Now celebrate by winning again. Glorious victory. So, of course, as time passes, I will play more. We'll slowly expand the game more and more until eventually we'll have the full game available to us. And we'll do engage in a true arms race, a true contest of arms, a true terminal conflict. So again, I want to say uh, thank you to Strategy Mill and everyone there for this, what looks like a very interesting game. I'm looking forward to when the full game is available to be played. And those who are at home and watched, please uh, share your thoughts, your comments. I would love to know, and I'm sure they'd love to hear the feedback too. Uh, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed, and if you're feeling generous, you can support me on Patreon or follow me on Twitter, and otherwise, yeah. Um, thanks for the beta key, guys, and I look forward to playing your game. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Talk to everyone later.